Again, sometimes a person may, with guidance, may have to lower or change their own standards for certain things so that their marriage has less conflict so that they can get closer to each other on that value system so that in the long run, their values will grow together. I'll give you a small example. It might be a funny example, but I think this is an important point. I had a couple ones that came to me. When they got married, this guy's hat was a baseball cap and his jacket was like a, a like made out of like jean material, jeans, yeah, denim. Okay, that's what this guy wore, okay? That was his hat and his jacket. He did not own a hat and a jacket. That was what it was, okay? Then after 10 years, the guy became very inspired and decided that he comes home one day, he's wearing a hat, bend down, the whole spiel, Porcelino, and he's wearing like a proper jacket and he like walks in the door and his wife like was like, are you collecting tzedakah? Like she didn't even know who he was. She was like, what is going on here? And he was like, yeah, this is the new me. You have to accept me. And, and she was not ready for that. She was not ready for that. And we had a long conversation. I'll tell you the muscle that I told him. Life is like a journey. And marriage is like two people going on that journey side by side. So imagine if you're going for a thousand mile walk. Okay. It's a long time. Two people walking together side by side. That's what marriage is. It's unity. It's in the word. Journey of unity. Right? Kesher. Davak. It's in the word. It's in the, the description of what marriage is. Now, imagine if one person says, listen, we're going forward. I'm going to go forward ahead of you. I'm going to walk a mile ahead of you. I'm going to go on this thousand mile journey. But on mile two, I'm now running to mile three while you take a break. And we'll keep going on this journey. I'll meet you at the end. I'm sorry to say that's not marriage. You might be going in the right direction. But if your right direction is taking you away from your spouse, you may, in certain instances, obviously, you may sometimes have to say, I need to either change my standard, or sometimes figure out that it's not conflicting with your spouse. Now, obviously, I am not talking about breaking halacha or, or anything along that, that line. But with guidance, with guidance, a person sometimes may have to make sure that their, that their values are aligned to the point where the spouse is, that the marriage is not being affected. There's a certain halacha, I don't want to go into the whole details now, a very complex shayla that was presented to Rav Yashiv that was very much along these lines of a wife who was keeping halacha to a certain level and the husband was not. And when they presented this to Rav Yashiv, his response was, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. The wife's level of observance in halacha and the husband, it's not going to work. Ah, but the wife was right. And he, he said, I'm going to teach you how to be makal over here. And he was mekel for the wife to bend halacha to the point where the couple was strong. And then over time, over time, the husband was able to grow towards his wife's direction. There was no resentment. There was no animosity. There wasn't hating Hashem and hating halacha and hating the rabbis. There was none of that. Because she was able to understand that this journey, if you're not on this journey together, so what do you have? You have no marriage. So... Sometimes that's the answer, not across the board. Ask your local Orthodox rabbi. But sometimes when those, mar- when those values are not aligned, when those concepts are not aligned, you have to make a concession if it's within the worlds where it's affecting both of you.